Hi there, welcome to Alpine Bravo. My name is Brendan and this is my channel for all things Microsoft Flight Simulator. In this video we'll be carrying on our series of tutorials on the FlySimware Learjet 35A and we'll be looking in this video at hydraulics, the landing gear, braking system and nose wheel steering. A number of important aircraft systems are dependent on the aircraft hydraulic system. That includes the flaps, the spoilers, the thrust reversers, and the brake and the wheel brakes, and of course the landing gear uh, extension and retraction. So uh, hydraulics are pretty important. Hydraulic pressure is provided by bleed air, from the engines, uh, so either engine can provide all the sufficient uh, bleed air pressure to drive the hydraulic system. If you require hydraulic pressure on the ground before starting the engines, uh, this is typically used when actuating the parking brake, then there is an auxiliary hydraulic pump, electrical hydraulic pump, in the center console, which is the hide pump switch there. And hydraulic pressure is indicated on this gauge here, which you can see is reading zero as well, zero at the moment. And we have a low hydraulic pressure annunciator on the co-pilot glare shield over there. If I try to, there's no hydraulic pressure at the minute, so if you see I'm trying to activate the parking brake and it won't because there's no hydraulic pressure. We can resolve that by turning on the hydraulic pump and we will now see we've got hydraulic pressure looking at about 125 which is normal and if we come across to the glare shield we will see that the low hydraulic pressure light has extinguished and we can now actuate the parking brake. The auxiliary system will provide hydraulic pressure for all the systems but uh, what it won't do is uh, it's not supposed to be able to provide hydraulic pressure for the spoilers. However, I think as the aircraft is currently modelled, it is in fact possible to operate the spoilers on uh, the auxiliary hydraulic pressure pump alone. However, in reality, that should only be possible with the engines supplying the hydraulic pressure. There's a one point nine gallon reservoir of uh, hydraulic fluid and as i say it's a pressurized engine bleed air that uh, energizes that in normal operation it's not normal to leave the hydraulic pump in the on position uh, once you've used it for whatever you need to do whether it's to engage the parking brakes or extend flaps for some reason without the engines running it should be turned off again otherwise uh, the pump will continue to cycle and it can shorten the lifespan of the pump. The landing gear, traditional tricycle arrangement with dual wheel mains. There are four brakes assemblies, one for each wheel on the mains. And they're equipped with an anti-skid function as well. The nose wheel doesn't have a brake, but it has a nose wheel steering actuator which is variable and that will give up to 45 degrees of deflection at low speeds uh, so speeds of around eight knots um, and that reduces progressively up to a maximum of eight degrees of deflection at higher speeds extension and retraction of the landing gear is achieved through the hydraulic system so you do require hydraulic pressure to be able to extend or retract the gear in normal operation and that is provided by engine bleed air or the auxiliary hydraulic pump. The gear is operated from this landing gear panel here. Uh, we have an electrical switch quite simply up and down. We have a test and a mute so test will put in the test position it will illuminate all six lights and sound a horn and placing the mute switch will um, mute the horn as well. 
the brightness here that just controls the brightness of the LEDs. Let's have a little restart there. We can put it up. The gear horn, which we heard just then, will sound in a number of uh, uh, a number of conditions have to be met. First of all, the landing gear uh, is not down and locked, and the altitude is less than fourteen and a half thousand feet. The thrust lever is below approximately fifty five percent N one, and the airspeed is below one hundred and seventy IAS. If those conditions are met, then the gear horn will sound. The other, uh, it will sound as well permanently uh, if you extend the full flaps to go to flaps 40 without having the gear extended. Uh, if you do that, then you won't be able to mute it. Otherwise, if it does sound, you can use the mute switch here to mute it. Or you can also press the gear mute button which is on the right hand thrust lever but I don't believe that is modelled. It isn't possible to retract the gear accidentally on the ground because there is a squat switch which will not uh, initiate the retraction sequence while there is weight on the wheels. During retraction and extension the red unsafe lights will illuminate in sequence as various signals get sent but essentially when those lights are illuminated it means that the gear is still in transit and not safe for landing or not fully retracted. In the event of failure of hydraulic pressure either because of a leak or because of loss of uh, complete loss of engine power then provision is made for emergency extension of the landing gear and that is done pneumatically and there is a bottle you see the nitrogen or pressurized nitrogen or pressurized air and there is a bottle that can be used and this is the emergency air bottle here this is what that's for it's for uh, it's not for breathing it is for extending the landing gear and operating the emergency braking system the emergency landing gear extension it's a bit hidden away you might not notice it if you're normally flying in the left hand seat but this is the lever here the emergency air will also uh, be used for the emergency braking system which is that big red lever there the gear should not be extended at speeds above uh, 200 knots indicated although once extended it can you can go up to 260 knots with the gear extended safely the braking systems you have a left and right braking differential braking provided by the rudder pedals and we've already mentioned the parking brake when discussing hydraulics but that's operated by this lever here and indicated with this yellow light here will show or amber light there will show whenever the parking brake is engaged and it can be a little bit difficult to spot. Four lights beneath it are for the anti-skid system. This is essentially ABS arrangement. Um, the four lights, if there's a failure detected in either one of the, the modules, is one for each wheel, it will illuminate red if there is a problem detected. And the anti-skid system is engaged with the switch here and it is normally left in the on position there's never any need to turn it off the only reason that you might want to turn it off is if you suspect that there was ice accumulation on the wheels after say you've been taxiing in snow and slush and after you've taken off you think that there might be uh, ice accumulated there well there's a couple of things you can do one you can let the don't retract the gear for at least a minute let the gear hang and the wheels will spin and that will help shake off the ice and slush but also uh, within the wheel well itself before landing what you can do is turn the anti-skid off and then pump the brakes and that may help break up any icing that's formed on the brake system but don't forget to turn the anti-skid back on there's no anti-skid provided for the emergency brake to say that is operated pneumatically and there's no differential braking with that as well that will just whack the brakes on for both uh, wheels uh, uniformly. So already mentioned the 
nose wheel has steering capability. That's not on automatically though. If you want to use the nose wheel steering, you have to engage it. Uh, and that is achieved by two ways. Uh, you either press and hold the steer lock button here on the center console. Um, and what that, it doesn't lock the steering, it unlocks the steering, a bit counterintuitively. Or, as explained in part one, you press the master wheel switch and you can see then on the enunciator panel a green steer on has illuminated and you need to press and hold that and while that's pressed, pressed and held it will engage nose wheel steering. You can uh, use the nose wheel steering when you're on your takeoff roll which might help provide more authority to counter a strong crosswind situation but uh, I would say use with caution because it's pretty effective the nose wheel steering and it can be difficult to maintain a runway center line if you have it you may need to consider if you prefer using it you might want to consider dialing down your rudder pedal sensitivity that concludes everything on the aircraft hydraulic system landing gear braking system and nose wheel steering we also touched a little bit on the pneumatic system in the aircraft which is quite basic do make sure to watch the other videos in this tutorial series, particularly those on the aircraft systems, because when we move on to the aircraft checklists, uh, they will make a lot more sense if you understand the underlying systems associated with the various switches you're flicking. And if you found this useful, do hit like and subscribe and look forward to seeing you in the next video.